All right, biology students, we are continuing on with our genetics unit. Um, and in this lesson, we're going to do an introduction of the process of meiosis, um, which might sound very similar to something that we have already discussed, mitosis. So when we talked about cells, we talked about the process of mitosis. Um, and so briefly today, I'm going to touch on the difference between the two processes and why we're talking about meiosis in our genetics unit. Um, but this particular lesson is going to be an overview of some of the vocabulary associated with meiosis. And then in the next lesson, we're going to actually go into the process of meiosis. So the fusion of a single egg and sperm cell resulted in the complex creature that is you. And the DNA that directs your cells came from your mom and your dad, and their DNA came from their mother and father, and so on and so on. And so today we're going to look at and examine the process that went into making you who you are. All right, so the first thing that you need to know is that there are many different types of specialized cells in your body, and we can classify those in two ways. So you have somatic cells, um, which are also called body cells. These are like your nerve cells, your skin cells, your blood cells. Then you also have gametes. And gametes are an organism's reproductive cells. So they're also called sex cells. Sometimes they're referred to as germ cells. But female gametes are called ova or eggs, and male gametes are called sperm. Now, in somatic cells or body cells, the DNA inside of those cells are not passed to offspring. However, DNA in gametes or sex cells can be passed to offspring. So that's the difference between the two that you need to make sure that you know. So somatic cells are body cells, gametes are sex cells. All right, now we have discussed chromosomes um, quite a bit prior to this lesson, but just to make sure that we clarify and that we're on the same page and we're prepared for the next lesson, uh, remember, a chromosome is a condensed DNA molecule that contains part or all of an organism's genetic material. So you can see here in this image, this is representative of a chromosome, and inside that chromosome you have DNA molecule that is wound up, tightly packed inside of there. Now, each species has a characteristic number of chromosomes per cell. It's not the same in every organism. Um, for example, humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes, or 46 total. All right, I'd like for you to do a little bit of research um, before we get into the lesson. Uh, I'd like for you to go through each of these organisms and just do a quick search and see if you can find the number of chromosomes that are present in these organisms, somatic cells and gametes, and then just kind of copy them into this chart. Go ahead and pause the video now and do that, and then come back and check your answers. All right, so maybe, hopefully, this is what you found, and you can see here that chromosome number differs depending on the organism. Um, so in humans, humans have 46 total chromosomes in their somatic cells, and then their gametes are going to contain half that number. We'll talk about that in just a second, um, which is 23. And then look all the way at the bottom, fruit fly. So the fruit fly only contains eight chromosomes in their somatic cells and in their gametes, four. All right, so this is sort of um, what we have talked about from unit two until this point or to this point. So we start with the cell, and then we know inside the cell you have the nucleus. Inside the nucleus you have DNA that is wound up inside of these things that we call chromosomes. All right, now there are two types of chromosomes. You have autosomes and then you have sex chromosomes. So if you look at this illustration here, this picture on the right side of the screen, this is called a karyotype. And a karyotype is a diagram that just shows an organism's collection of chromosomes. So this particular uh, karyotype is a human karyotype. And we can look and see that this person, this individual, has 22 pairs of autosomes. So autosome, autosome, autosome. So you can see all these autosomes. And there's 22 pairs of autosomes. And these, these autosomes are chromosomes that are going to carry traits like eye color or freckles or uh, bone structure, even height. 
So these autosomes carry traits. Now this person also has two sex chromosomes. You can see that down here at the bottom right hand corner of the karyotype. So we see here that this person has an X and a Y chromosome. So we know that this individual is genetically classified as a male. Two X chromosomes would be representative of a female. All right, so these sex chromosomes are going to contain genes related to biological sex, not necessarily traits. All right, the next vocabulary term that we need to look at um, are homologous chromosomes. So sexually reproducing organisms are going to inherit their genes from both parents. Now, this means that these organisms will pass two copies of each chromosome, one from mom and one from dad. And these maternal and paternal chromosome pairs are called homologous chromosomes. Homologous chromosomes share the same structural features and the same genes. So you can see here, this is a set of homologous chromosomes. One comes from mom, one comes from dad, and they're going to um, share the same genes. Now, if we replicate or duplicate each of these chromosomes, we might get something like this. So these are still homologous pairs, homologous chromosomes, one from mom, one from dad. But now we give each of these the term sister chromatids. So we've talked about sister chromatids before when we talked about mitosis, but now we're going to just revisit that because sometimes it's confusing. Um, but sister chromatids refer to each uh, each chromatid, um, but if we're talking about the two together, since they share the same genes, um, we call them homologous chromosomes. All right, diploid and haploid. So diploid is the term that we use to describe when we have a full set of chromosomes. Now that's two copies of each. In humans, this is going to be 46. In rats, it's going to be 42. In fruit flies, it's going to be 8. So full set of chromosomes, diploid. We represent diploid cells with um, the symbol 2N to represent two copies of each chromosome. Now your somatic cells or your body cells are going to be diploid. And then you have haploid cells. So haploid is a term used to describe half the number of chromosomes. And these cells only have one copy of each chromosome. And we're going to use the letter N. You can see that here. We're going to use the letter N to represent haploid cells. So when you think haploid, think half, half the number of chromosomes. All right, so sex cells or gametes are haploid, meaning that they contain half the number of chromosomes. Now, in humans, that number is going to be 23, which is half of the full set, half of 46. In rats, that's going to be 21. Fruit flies, that's going to be four. Four chromosomes in their gametes. All right, now, when we're talking about sexual reproduction, in order to make offspring, we have to have a fertilized sperm and egg cell. Now, remember, each gamete contains half the number of chromosomes. So when fertilization occurs, we're going to get what's called a zygote, and the full number of chromosomes are going to be restored. So you can see in this picture here, we have a haploid cell in the form of an egg. It's going to unite with another haploid cell in the form of a sperm, and so this process is called fertilization, and fertilization is going to yield us a zygote, okay, which is a cell um, that has been fertilized. And so it's going to be 2N. It's going to have the full set of chromosomes, half from the egg, half from the sperm. All right, now, we have already talked about mitosis, and we're going to go back and revisit that a little bit. Um, and then we are going to introduce a new process that we'll talk about in the next lesson, meiosis. But before we get into meiosis, I want to revisit mitosis and just sort of connect the two so that you have an idea of how we're going to separate the two. Because the processes do seem similar. They sound similar. Um, but it won't be until the next lesson where you start to understand the differences between the two. Now, the zygote that we just created here, right? All right, it's going to go through the process of mitosis. And this cell, a single cell, is going to divide into two cells. You can see that in the picture. So we have a zygote. Um, it is a 2N diploid cell. 
um, and we're going to get after mitosis to diploid cells. Okay, so this is the process of somatic cells creating somatic cells, more somatic cells. And the DNA inside of these um, daughter cells is going to be genetically identical to the parent cell. Okay, we've already learned that in our cells unit. Now, meiosis that we'll talk about in the next lesson is going to start with one cell, and it's going to end with four daughter cells. So in mitosis, we ended with two. In meiosis, we're going to end with four daughter cells. Now, this process is going to be the process of taking a somatic cell or taking somatic cells and creating sex cells or gametes. And these cells are going to have different DNA than the original parent cell. And we'll talk about how that happens in the next lesson. All right, so one more time, a closer look. Meiosis, which we'll talk about in the next lesson, is going to take a, a somatic cell and produce sex cells or gametes. And these sex cells, there's going to be four of them, and they are going to be genetically different than the parent cell. So we're going to start to see a little bit of difference here between meiosis and mitosis. So here's the whole process. Again, we'll look at this in the next lesson, um, but this is just an overview. We're going to produce genetically unique cells, four of them. We're going to get haploid cells. So this is where a somatic cell or a body cell changes into a sex cell. Remember, sex cells are haploid. They're going to have half the number of chromosomes. Now, meiosis takes place only at certain times in an organism's life cycle. This is different from mitosis because, remember, in mitosis, that happens throughout an organism's entire life cycle. But meiosis is only going to happen at certain times. Now, meiosis is involved in sexual reproduction. That's different than mitosis because mitosis is considered a type of asexual reproduction. But again, we're going to look more into detail with meiosis in the next lesson.